Hello, I hope you're all doing well out there. My name is Rebecca Ross. I am the director of the Office of Student Accessibility Services at Widener University. And this is Harper. She is my sleeping sidekick while we are working from home during this pandemic. I'm here to create a walkthrough on adding captions to videos on YouTube. Many of us are creating oodles of online content now that much of our program has shifted to online platforms. If you find yourself creating videos, that's excellent. It's a great way to connect with our students. However, we as an institution want to ensure that we're connecting with all of our students. And in order to do this, we have to make sure that our online content is fully and accurately captioned. It is our responsibility as content creators to make sure that everyone can benefit from our creation. Students who have audio processing concerns or hearing issues may not fully get the insight you're putting into your content without captions. But others in your audience will benefit from this as well. Maybe folks with distractions in the background, if they have younger siblings or children, um, people with attentional concerns, folks for whom English is their second language, all can benefit from accurate captions. You'll hear me talk about OCR standards. OCR is the Office of Civil Rights, and their standard for captions that mean equal access for students with disabilities is a 99.9% .9 accuracy. So automatically generated captions aren't going to cut it. We're gonna to have to go back in, make corrections, and here's how we will do it. So here we are. This is actually the uh, Student Success YouTube page that I created. Um, through this pandemic, I'm going to walk you through how to get to the place where you can edit and add captions. So if you're creating a YouTube platform for your department or just for your individual use, you want to get to your main site and click on your profile picture circle up here. This is going to give you a menu of options and the place in which you can add and change captions is YouTube Studio. I feel like it might be taking a little bit of time. Um, since I have Zoom up, but we'll see how long it takes. Also, my computer was not meant for uh, at-home use, for constant uh, working from home. So I'm um, hopefully you guys aren't dealing with similar issues. Uh, so you're going to go to your videos here. It's only going to show videos that you yourself have uploaded. So let's say you have playlists and other folks' content on your main page like we do. We have tons of wider content on there. Um, I only have control of the captions for my videos. You can do, uh, you can add publicly sourced captions. So if somebody's out there and they kind of, they, they know there's an error, they might send in an edit. You can make your videos open to that. But for this purpose, let's just focus on our own content and how to make it fully accessible. So I'm going to go into this, my latest one, which is on extensions, uh, browser extensions, and you're going to go into details. It's the pencils like the universal edit sign I feel like. So once you go into your video specifically on this left side panel you're going to see a subtitles option. You click in that subtitles option it's going to bring you to this um, and you can see I have a few rows of uh, captions. What you're probably going to have is two. You're going to have this bottom one where it allows you to add a file that maybe has a script in it so that it would automatically kind of generate your captions. If you create a script prior to making a video and then can go in and upload it, that's great. I feel like that's probably not what most folks do. I know for me, I ad lib through most of my videos, so I have to kind of go back and, and tweak it now that it's done. When you first upload a video, probably for a few hours, this row is gonna be the only one that lives here. It takes a little bit for YouTube to generate your captions through a, like a robotic AI that does it. And so you have to give it some time. Once it's done, you'll get this automatic bar, English automatic, and it will be what YouTube has determined as uh, what they feel like you're saying. It does take usually a couple hours. I've had it take up to five or six hours at a point. I'm sure YouTube's trying to struggle because I'm fairly certain there's tons of content going on to you these days. And up here you'll see my bar. This is actually uh, when I went through and redid my captions, uh, it created a new file. And so this is the most updated one. But I'm going to go into this automatically generated one so that you can see uh, kind of 
how uh, the limitations, I guess, on the accuracy of, of what YouTube's uh, robots do. So we're going to open in Classic Studio, and it's going to bring you to this page. So it's actually super easy, and they're not terribly inaccurate, but they're certainly not going to meet the OCR standards we talked about before. So this is our video. It's going to start from the beginning. And we're going to walk you through what to expect and how to change the things that you see. Okay, so here we are. I added it so you can hear the audio as it plays, but I can see from here that it says that I said honey, and that is not typically something I would say in a professional video. So I'm guessing that's wrong. Um, so we're going to play through it. I'm going to press edit up here so that this left column becomes something that I can type into. Here we go. So as you can see now, all of their captions are editable. You can go through and, and make the fixes as you go. But what you typically have to do is play through your video. And so we're gonna start by playing. That can go away, that face. Hi, I'm making a quick video to try and get us through this pandemic time, I hope. Okay, so what happened was the audio cut out. I said, hey, everybody. And what it picked up was what it thought was honey. So I'm gonna go in and write, hey everybody, comma, making a quick video, blah, blah, blah. And then press play. Hey everybody, I'm making a quick video to try and get us through this pandemic time. I hope you're able to stay healthy and safe right now. I am hearing from a lot of my students that there are some hard times as far as getting things structured and on schedule and meeting all of the deadlines. So right there it says, and meeting all of the deadlines. Um, and what it actually, what I actually said was meeting, so I'm gonna go back and change it. As you can see, they're not terribly inaccurate, right? They're just not gonna go anywhere near that 99.9% .9 that the Office of Civil Rights have determined to be what's considered equal access and not discriminatory. So uh, we do have to go through and double check. Some key tips to being able to do this at an effective level is making sure your videos aren't terribly long. Uh, for a 10 minute video, it might take me 20 minutes to go through and fix all the captions. So it's not that much of a time um, investment on my end, but if you're creating 90 minute videos or if you're creating two hour videos or anything longer than that, it's gonna be a lot of time to sit through and fix the captions. So you might wanna chunk it down. Best practices typically say that maybe less than 45 minutes is ideal just for the student's attention span. And also um, it's difficult to get quality content through a video, you imagine watching a television show if it's running slow, I mean, they're only 30 minutes and sometimes they're too slow, you know, and we don't have the ability to edit action scenes into what we're doing. So you're really talking at folks without being there, it's much more challenging to, to hold and capture attention. So you're going to want to make sure you chunk your videos down for that purpose, but it also helps for captioning because it's just going to be a lot to do for 90 minute videos. Other than that, you just finished all of your captions. Now, I'm not going to uh, save these because I already went through and captioned this video, so I know all the other, one, the other one's accurate. Um, I'm gonna delete this draft. But if you publish edits, that makes it so that when a user goes onto this video, your corrected captions are what they're going to see and use to get through the content. Um, I, again, I'm gonna delete my draft because I haven't gone through the whole video and I did this yesterday. <laughs> so. Um, so you can go through and, and watch your videos, make sure that it's something that all students can benefit from. It's certainly ideal to, to make sure that everything we do from Widener's standpoint is something that all students can benefit from. And certainly if a student is struggling with any kind of diagnosis or disability, we want to make sure we have the supports to get them through. If you have any questions at all, you can always contact my office. Uh, you can contact me directly at my email, which is rross at widener.edu. I'm going to try to put it somewhere around here. Um, or you can contact us at our corporate email, which is disabilities at widener.edu. However you want to do, the things you do is great. But we want to make sure that everything we do is accessible. So please tap into your resources if you need it. TLT, the Teaching and Learning Technologies Department with working with the library has been phenomenal 
with these endeavors. And if you're creating content for the purposes of teaching courses, you can also go through this process in Canvas. Canvas has a great feature to go through and edit your captions, and TLT can help you with that as well. So that's going to be it for me. I hope you all stay safe and stay well. But in the meantime, we are here. We're ready and willing to help you with anything that you can need us for.